Yeah, I am. That's not what I heard. No, those are bad weenies. Those are the good weenies. Use that one. Well, that that explains why. Did you turn your tank off yet? Yeah, it's off. Yeah. Although it's still leaking, Did you purge it? You still have your fins on? Why don't you take the gear off? And and float it over here. You're welcome. Here, you can put their weight belts right here, Ken. And it's got to be exceptionally nasty, so it's difficult to drink. Just toss it up there, Ken.
That's good, Kimberly. That's good. You can leave it right there. Hey, do we, who do we still have underwater? Oh, that's right. That's right. teaching but she's not doing <laughs> breathing properly but it, this is not a, a full rescue course this is a uh, master course where they're getting a little bit more exposure to rescues mm -hmm. yeah, Corey and Carson and uh, David are taking watch out behind you there's a cable Uh, Carson's here, but he's uh, we only since we only have one here, it's kind of a we gotta be. I, I I can do a little bit with him, but I can't do a whole lot with just one guy here. So yeah, yeah. Carson, raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, and we teach snorkel breathing in the advanced rescue force. Yeah, just to show you. Yeah. I actually know some people that uh, when they first went through their assistant instructor, they started carrying one on every single dive. And about five or six dives into it, I pull one of them aside and I go, have you opened up the case to take a look at what you're doing to that pocket mask? And they opened it up and there was green and black stuff growing all around and like the, the, uh, the you know, the little bag had pretty much disintegrated and I go, you know, if you're going to dive with it, that's great, but you might want to rinse it out after every dive. Because they had just put it in their BC pocket and never taken it out. Yeah, uh, Dan needs to uh, come up with a smaller one that get that is watertight. Yeah, you could. You could. The nice thing about the, the pocket mask is it gives you that one-way valve, so if they spit blood up, which, if they have a pneumothorax, they're going to be spitting blood up. The pocket mask protects you from being exposed to that blood. No, not really. It's not a one-way valve. When they switch, I'm going to go up and start the heater and the water boiling for the hot cocoa. And then I'm going to start cooking. Are you just upset and tattling because you're not involved? <laughs> I'm 
everybody's out. You should start. There with that group. We also teach some advanced, in our advanced rescue, we teach some advanced extraction techniques. One of them is called uh, uh, tar buckling. It's where you take like a rope or a strap for a much higher dock and you put, you uh, plant one on this side and put the other one on the other side and you use it to lift them up and roll them out of the water for a much higher dock. Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's rather intense techniques to get people out of the water. I just hope I never have to do another rescue, a real one. I, yeah, I've done two. I'm not very, not very happy with them. <laughs> yep. David, can you push this over towards the dock? You guys are taking your weight belts off, right? Okay. Hey, me, just one of the regulators. That works. Yes, it is. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, Carson's actually uh, a borderline certified EMT, or he's worked on the EMT and paramedic teams, uh, and I think he's lifeguarded one season. <laughs> yeah. He just needs to grow up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, w I would agree with that. the mask he's diving with? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 